talking Bentley women's basketball today on any 10. Now the podcast, we are joined by Bentley senior Maggie Whitmore. Uh, first off, Maggie, thanks for taking the time. Congrats on the start that you guys have had. Uh, talk to me generally about the season to this point for Bentley. And as we record this, um, I know still a long term to play, but uh, you guys are tied for first. So what's been going well? Well, thank you for having me. Um, I would say, you know, good start to our season. Um, we've kind of had to deal with some injuries here and there, but overall, I think overcoming adversity has kind of been our our rite of passage this uh, start of the year. Um, again, we've, you know, we're 12 and two right now. Um, two losses, don't love, but um, we learned for them. Um, we're getting better every day. We're still pretty young. Um, so having our young guys kind of learn the way, just get better every day. Um, our practices have been really good so far. So you know, day by day, you know, looking one opponent ahead, trying to just get better and, you know, learn as much as we can along the way. Let me talk about the two losses because <laughs> for you to phrase it the way of saying, well, we've played 14 games, we lost twice, don't love that. Um, it's funny because Coach White before the season said uh, pretty explicitly, like, we have goals. We talk about those goals. Our goals are to win the conference. Our goals are to go to the Elite Eight. Our goals are to make an impact and be a team to be reckoned with. That's the goal. We, we want to be the team to represent the NE10. Um, you want to host, you know, the NE10 championships. You want to host the regional championships. And you want to be the team that represents the NE10 in the best light in the Elite Eight and Final Four. And and that's that's the goal this year. So, I mean, obviously that rubs off when you look at it and say, ah, the two that stick in my car, the, the two that we didn't get. Um, talk to me about your mentality as a team. How do you guys think, how do you approach this season and and how does that singular focus really drive you? Yeah, I think our main focus is, you know, like I said, taking it day by day, um, only looking at the team that's right in front of us at that given moment. Kind of like that mentality that like they're in our way of our goals. I think every team in this league um, has those lofty goals. I mean, no one would tell you otherwise. Um, so just like taking the mentality of, we need to play our best and just get better every day to achieve those goals. Um, and I think at this point, everybody has kind of bought in um, to those goals and what we need to do to achieve them, I think has been laid out for us and just moving forward again, day by day, just, you know, making it work. <laughs> What's the, uh, the injury adversary injury adversity done to make you guys better? Um, I think injuries, adversity, in general, it's how you respond to those things. Um, and I think this year, I think def we've had so many random people step up in any given moment. Um, you kind of never know whose night it's going to be for us, which has been um, really fun to watch, really fun to play with. Um, those people that just are willing to do whatever they can to help our team win um, day in and day out. You know, Ella stepped up huge in any given moment. Kylie has played really well. Um, Naya coming in off the bench has been really great for us. So just watching those people kind of evolve their game um, to kind of do what they can do to just help us win. Um, talk to me a little bit about your development because you're in your third year playing, fourth year as a member of the, the program, fourth year in college. A um, little bit more of a leadership stance for you at this point. How have you evolved and, and grown into that role? Yeah, I've been blessed to have great people above me kind of set that path of what's expected, um, specifically from a leadership role. Um, I learned a lot from Kari Brecky last year, kind of watching her pave her way um, through this program, just taking as much as I could from her. Um, this year, I definitely have found myself more in that leadership role on and off the court. Um, it's been great for me personally. Um, it's kind of pushed me on the court to just be a better overall player, um, doing whatever I can to help this team win and just, you know, off the court being that person that everyone on the team can rely on. Um, and I feel like that's kind of helped everybody in this year to kind of taking the pressure a little bit off Ella, um, you know, finding, finding ways to do things to help everybody. Um, it's kind of been just what I've done just from learning from the people of the past before me. Let's talk about you uh, personally a little bit, even before you get to Bentley, uh, you're from Maine. And I think it's funny because people talk about Maine high school basketball now, I think specifically through the lens of Cooper flag. Um, but even on the women's side before that, um, you know, Anna DeWolf is doing great at Notre Dame and uh, Mackenzie Holmes at Indiana. And and I, I think people always look at it and say, oh, I didn't, I didn't know they played high, my great high school basketball in Maine. Um, I, I want to give you a chance to like vouch for Maine high school basketball a little bit and how um, what you grew up playing 
uh, has crafted you into the player and the person that you are? Yeah, I've been super fortunate to, you know, play with a lot of those great players that you've named um, through AAU, and I had the opportunity to play against them in high school. So I think Maine is just special. It's a pretty large state, but a small knit community. Um, everybody kind of knows everybody. Um, for me, it's really cool here at Bentley, too, because I play with two of my AAU teammates from Maine and also my high school rivals. So kind of playing with them has been a cool experience here. But I would say Maine High School basketball, I think it's continuously getting better. I think people like Anna DeWolf, Mackenzie Holmes, um, kind of set that pave, pavement moving forward. And I think Cooper Flagg has just, you know, set set Maine on the on the map a little bit. Um, what he's doing is kind of unheard of, especially for Mainers. Um, so it's really cool just being a Mainer, kind of having those people also find success at the collegiate level. Um, it'll be really cool to see what Cooper can do in college and beyond. Um, but, you know, Maine is kind of where it's at right now. There's a lot of great kids coming up that, you know, will continue to set the path for what the future holds. Um, I had a great experience growing up, you know, playing AAU was kind of how I got to Bentley. Um, and again, playing with people like Anna, Mackenzie, Brooke, and Amanda here, um, you know, playing with great people just makes you better. So that's kind of something I've always taken away from Maine and Maine High School basketball. Tell me about Brooke a little bit, uh, Brooke Obar, uh, for you guys to play together in high school and have the opportunity to come and play together in college. Was it something you guys talked about? Um, how did it all come together and, and what's it like to spend another four years together? Yeah, it's pretty cool. We've been playing AU together since we were in fourth grade, so kind of go way back. Um, it's been a great experience, kind of been through all the ups and downs with each other. We're roommates this year, so it's been super cool just from my experience watching her evolve, you know, as a player. She's, you know, had to deal with injuries herself, so just like her mentality going into every day is pretty cool um and just having the opportunity to share the court with her again is is something we kind of looked forward to we definitely had a similar recruiting path um here at Bentley they actually offered us the same day which was pretty cool um and just you know being best friends it's something that you you love to go through life doing that with and we just have fun along the way so it's been a really cool experience what'd you think for Amanda Amanda was your high school rival yeah it, was there like a no that girl's going to Bentley <laughs> How did that come together? Um, thankfully, I knew her outside of basketball and just, you know, playing AU with her too. Like, she's just such a great kid that you were like, I want this girl on my team. You know, you want the best players to be on your team. So that was definitely nothing we looked at negatively. We were like, let's go. Let's ride with this. Um, there is another Whitmore who plays basketball at St. Joe's in Maine. Um, I believe your sisters. Uh, <laughs> uh, tell me what it's like growing up with somebody who is so close to you in age. Um, that also plays basketball and, and what it was like um, maybe being teammates or rivals with one another. Yeah, that was really cool. i um, super blessed to have my older sister, Katie. Um, she just kind of pushed me to be better in every way. I just kind of was always younger. So I always just, you know, wanted to be just like her, be as good as her. Um, we actually have a younger sister who's significantly younger, so it's been kind of cool to watch that dynamic go. She's now a freshman in high school. So it's been cool to just, you know, have that main high school we played together for four years in main high school basketball and now having the opportunity to watch our younger sister in main high school basketball is pretty cool um but growing up you know we were rivals in a sense that we were always wanted to out best each other um and it just made both of us better and you know our love for the game it kind of runs deep in our family so it's it's something that collectively as a family you know we, we just we grip to basketball and we love it so it's been pretty cool did you was it back and forth a lot earlier? Was there a time where like, ah, I finally got my older sister in a game of one-on-one? Um, it was probably like high school that I was like, okay, I got, I got this now. Like we're on the same team, but we're going to go at it. We're going to fight for everything. But it was, it was just a health, healthy rivalry. We'll call it that, you know, just always wanting to make each other better. Um, for you, when you got to Bentley, obviously a difficult spot because your first year was 2020, 2021. So there's no basketball. Um, what was that first year like for you and, and how did you make that transition to college without being able to, to play games? Yeah, I think, you know, no one wants COVID. No one wanted what came of that. But for me personally, I think it was a really good year just to adjust to the college level. It's quicker, it's faster, it's more physical. So it was just a year of, you know, practicing every day, playing against some great people that, you know, pushed you day in and day out to kind of reach your your level of expectations. Um, 
And although, you know, not playing games can be a little bit of a drag, I love of basketball so it was kind of a great you know outlet for me where classes were online so just being able to go to the gym every day and although we are in mask you know you're still able to get better work on your fundamentals you know it's the little things that I think I learned that year of all right this is what makes Bentley women's basketball so great it's not what they do in games it's how they prepare and practice and I think that's something my freshman year that I really took away and you know kind of ran with especially like summer workouts when you're at home it's like okay like I can do this on my own I don't need a coach in the gym with me every day to you know get better um so I would say although it wasn't a great experience my freshman year um it was definitely something that you know pushed me as a player and a person had to have made the sophomore year like first game sophomore year had to have been amazing yeah definitely (laughs) um now you fast forward you are you're a senior academically I won't ask you the tough question about uh, being a junior athletically. Um, but you guys uh, are, as we started with, um, in first place right now, doing really well, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, as we record this, your last three opponents have scored 32, 58, and 48 points. Um, the old cliche is people don't like to play defense. Um, whether or not that's true, I don't know. Uh, but why is it that you guys do and thrive on that side of the ball? Yeah, I think we learned that we as a team, you know, have a lot of really good offensive players, um, but we weren't going to win games on the offensive end. We were going to win them on the defensive end. And I think there's a buy-in this year from everybody one through 14 that we can't win games if we don't, you know, play our scout to a T, if we don't lock in defensively, get every rebound box out. Um, So, you know, that has been kind of our driving force this year. And we've definitely seen it in games where we have struggled to score, but our defense keeps us in game. So I think, Games like that just keep us keep us on track, keep us, you know, a little bit humbled in that sense that, you know, defense is going to win us this game. Defense is going to win us championships. The offense will come when the offense comes. Uh, Maggie, congratulations on the success so far this year and uh, best of luck uh, throughout the next couple of months here as you guys try to to get back to the top. Thank you.